Welcome to another free tip of the day brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's tip, I'm going to show you how to add a new record to a combo box by clicking a button, typing in the value, and then it will automatically show up in the combo box for your users. Here's the problem. I've got a contact manager where every time a customer calls, I mark the date and the notes, what we talked about. But if I want to add a new customer to this list, it's very difficult to do. I have to close this form and add into the customer form and then come back in here. What I want is a button where I can just say add customer, put in their values, close this, and then they show up in the list. And that's what this tutorial will show you how to do. Here's my simple little database that I have set up so far. I've got a customer table, which is very simply a customer ID, my auto number, first name, and last name. Of course, you can add more fields if you want to. I've got a contact table. The contact table consists of the contact ID, which is the auto number for this table, a customer ID, so I can track who the customer is. That's a related value. I cover that in my Access 201 class, how to relate two tables together. This is basically the customer ID from the other table. Then I have a contact date, which is automatically set to the current date and time using the default value. I have another tip video on how to do that. And then some basic notes. Basically, every time a customer calls in, I want my rep on the phone to make a note in the contact table who they talked to, what time it was, and what they talked about. I've built a simple continuous form for my contact information. The contact ID over here is the auto number. Can't change that. That's why I grade it out. Here's the customer. That's in a combo box. Again, I have a million different videos on my website on how to make combo boxes. This is basically a list of the customers. You can go through and pick from it. I used a little SQL trick to get the last name, comma, first name in there, joining two fields at once. Again, the contact date is automatic, and the note's over here. So let's say I get a phone call. It was Jim Kirk. The date and time is automatically inserted, and I can come over here and type in what we talked about. Jim wants a consultation. OK, and I'm ready for the next record. So far, all pretty simple stuff. I cover this in my other videos. Here's what this video is about. If I have a customer that's new, he's not in this list. So how do I go about adding someone to this list without having to close this form, open up the customer form, type in the person, reopen this form, and oh, now they're in the list. I want a quick, simple little button here that I can just add a new customer. Now, there is an event for combo boxes called on not in list. Let's go to design view real quick and I'll show you that. Here I am in design view. Open up the properties for your combo box, just double click on it. Go to the event tab and there's a property in here right there called on not in list. And that's basically code that'll run if the user tries to type in a value that's not in that list. I have other videos on my website. In fact, I'll give you a link to it at the end of this class where I do teach you how to use that. It's a little bit complex. You have to use some programming to get the values from the user and then enter them into the table programmatically, either using SQL or some VBA. But there's a simpler solution that I find works OK for most people. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Before we get into that, I'm going to build a simple little customer form that I can use to just enter in a new customer. So I'm going to close this contact form real quick. I'm going to click on Customer, Create, and then Form. Access throws together the automatic form for me, which is OK. I'm going to do some formatting magic of my own and get rid of a lot of the stuff that I don't like. So give me one second here. OK, there, through the magic of video editing, you didn't have to watch that. I just removed a bunch of the extraneous stuff, like the logo and the title. And, um, and I, I shrunk this stuff down, added a little bit of color. And nothing, nothing crazy, nothing I don't teach in my very basic form design lessons. But I want a nice little compact customer form with just the data that I need to be able to insert it into the other form real quickly. All right, so I'm going to save this as my customer form, customer F. I'm going to close it and reopen it. I like to close stuff and reopen them. Notice I've got floating windows. I don't like the full tabbed documents that Access 2010 uses. I always switch these over to overlapping windows. So I have the classic looking windows. Um, and I show you how to do that in some of my other tips too. 
But what I want to do is I want to design this as a single customer entry form by itself. I don't want to see the other customers in here. I don't need the record selectors and the navigation bars, and I want this to be a pop-up window. So the user has to type in a new customer and then close it. This is not going to be my standard customer form with all the information on it where you can browse through customers. So let's change a couple of properties. Go to Design View. Open up the properties for the form by double-clicking right here. I'm going to go to the Format tab. I'm going to turn off record selectors and navigation buttons. I'm going to go to the other tab here. I'm going to make this pop-up and modal. Now pop-up means that it's going to stay on top of other windows. And modal means you can't leave it until you close this form. So you've got to do something on this form before you can go back to the other forms, which is what I want. I'm also going to go to the data tab and set data entry to yes. That means you can't scroll back through previous records. You can only add new records with this form. Okay, we're almost done. I'm going to close this. Let's close our form now. Save it. Control S. Close it. I'm going to open it back up again to make sure it looks like I want. Yep, there we go. There's a white bar on the bottom here that's probably caused by scroll bars. One more property I have to fix. Let's go back into Design View. Bring up the Form Properties. Yep, there's the scroll bar property. Set that to Neither. We don't need scroll bars. There we go. Looks perfect. No scroll bars, no record selectors, no nothing. Just ready to enter a new record. Now, you can put some instructions on here, type in the new record. You could put a close button on here, which you can use the wizard for, just a button to close this form. And um, and that'll even give you know them a, you, you can put the word save on it, and that'll give the user who might not know access well the implication that they're saving the record. But for us, we're just going to close this form after we type in our customer. So I'll open up customer form to test it. Let's put someone new in here, right? How about Mr. Spock? I'll close this. And now if I look in my customer table, Mr. Spock has been added. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Now, back on my contact form, I'm going to add a little button down here on the bottom in the form footer that just says open up the customer form. All right, so let's go to design view. I'm going to open up my form footer a little bit here. I'll drop a command button right down here. And you can use the wizard for this. That's fine. Form operations, open a form. Which form? My customer F that I just built. I want to open the form and show all the records. That's fine because it's going to only show me new records. What do you want to put on here? I'll put text that says add customer. All right, next, give it a meaningful name, right? Add customer button, and then finish. Okay, there's my add customer button right there on the bottom. Okay, so here I am, back in the contact form. Drop this down. Okay, I want to add a customer. Click add customer. There's my new window. All right, now notice I can't click back over here because this is a modal form and it's pop-up, so it stays on the other one. All right, if I put someone in here, let's say um, William Riker. Yes, I'm a Star Trek nerd. All right, close it. Now, if I drop this down, he's not in here. Okay, why is that? Well, because I need to re-query the records in this combo box. Okay, I need to say, hey, contact form, customer combo box, re-query your values. Now, there's a couple of places you can do that. If you're going to put a button on this form, to save and close it, you could do that. Or you could use this form's on close event so that no matter how they close this form, whether they close it here or whether they hit the button, it's going to force a requery back here. Okay? And make sure the only way they can get this form open is by using this button. So that forces this form to have to be open. But how do we do that? Well, let's go to design view on this guy. And I apologize if I'm going fast. I try to keep my tip videos short. We're going to need to use the on close event for this form. So bring up the form properties, go to events, find the on close event down here. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do this with a macro or you can do this with VBA code. I'm personally preferential to VBA. I like the new embedded macros in Access 2010. I think they're great if you're building web databases because obviously VBA doesn't work on the web, but I'm a VBA junkie, so I like VBA. It's real easy to use. I'm going to click on this dot, dot, dot button over here. How do you want to build? I'm going to go with the code builder. Hit OK. That opens up the VBA window. Now, this is the event that happens when the form is closing. Okay? So I'm going to type in right here. I'm going to say forms. What's the name of the form you want to work with? Contact F. What's the field name? Well, I named it customer combo. That's the actual name of the combo box. Dot 
requery. And that's it. That's all you need to do. When this form closes, requery the customer combo box on the contact form. That's it. One line of code. All right. Save it. Control S. Close this window. I'm going to close my customer form. Now let's give it a try. Add customer. And of course, you can make the tab order start here so the user doesn't even have to see the customer ID if you don't want to. Let's put someone else in here, Sue Peters. All right. And I've got the cycle property too I can change, which will keep them only on one record. All right. Close that. Now let's take a look at the drop down box. And there's Sue Peters right there. See that? What happened was this opened the form. I typed in a new person, closed it. This box requeried, and now Sue Peter shows up in the customer list. Right? All right, let's say I want to add uh, uh, Dave Adams. Oh, Dave Adams is not in the list. Okay, add a customer. Dave Adams. Whoops, Adams. I can't type today. All right, close that or hit your save button, whatever you want to do. Drop this down. There's Dave Adams. So, real simple, very easy to do. You don't need on not in list programming, which is pretty complex. You can do this with one line of VB code and a little bit of know-how. I cover all of the topics that I showed you in today's class in my full access tutorials. If you enjoyed this, yes, it was a little fast. Again, my tip videos can go fast. My full-length courses, I go a little slower and take more time because I have hours to work with. But if, this, uh, if you enjoyed this at all, check out my other tutorials, and I hope you uh, come back for more. Have a great day. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. For lots more like it, tons of free tips, and other videos, visit my website at accesslearningzone.com. Beginners, if you're new to Access and need to learn the basics, you can watch my Access Beginner Level 1 course absolutely free. This is a limited time offer, so I can't guarantee it's going to be online forever. But right now, you can watch my entire two and a half hour beginner course absolutely free. Just use this special link. It's 599cd.com slash XACB138. And you can watch the entire course absolutely free, no charge. Make sure you follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And of course, if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me on my website, accesslearningzone.com. Have a great day.